Tell us another one is brought to you by Mad Marco Enterprises. Show idea, concept, and design by Marco Liberati. Please enjoy the show. <laughs> Cheers. Tell us another one. A show with tall tales, jokes, and antidotes. And now, please welcome your host, Marco Liberati. Alrighty, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Beautiful warm welcome from our live audience. If you want to come and join us for our uh, Tell Us Another One live audience, uh, click on to Tell Us Another One at Gmail, I think. If it's not right, it should be maybe at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so uh, with uh, Tell Us Another One, we uh, like to tell you guys a joke and then we tell you another one. So uh, I guess I'll get started with this one. Uh, there's a lady that uh, used to deliver our lunches. So when I'm not doing this, I do carpentry. And I was on a job site, and we had a lady delivering lunches, the lunch trucks. You familiar with those? Yes. The, uh, the lunch mobiles, lunch trucks, whatever they are. And uh, I went out to get lunch, and this lady here had these amazing long eyelashes. They were huge. Uh, and they were fake, right? They were the stick-on variety. <laughs> these, things were, these things were massive, right? I think you get like small, medium, large, extra large, and uh, I don't know if I should say this or not, but um, drag queen. I think, I think that's the scale, I don't know, I'm not sure how it works, but these things were out of control, they were massive, right? Anyway, so I got my lunch, um, all good, went back inside to sit down and have my, have my feed, and then one of the other guys walks in and he goes, did you see those? You can sweep the floor with them, couldn't you? <laughs> I've got a friend of mine that, uh, that, I, that I met through carpentry, Corne, he's a South African fella, and he's got that South African accent. And I'm going to try my best South African accent to do this joke some justice. So uh, here it is, a little joke that he told me about his time in the military in South Africa. I'll just pop this away. This is a visual gag. It requires a piece of toilet tissue. So here we go. Okay, you listen up, troops. I'm going to teach you how to survive in the African jungle. You see this? This is white gold. When you are trying to survive in the African jungle, you only need to use one single piece of toilet tissue. And I'll show you how to use it. So you get this, and you fold it into a triangle like so. And then you fold it into a smaller triangle like so. Now what you do is you get the tip, and you cut the tip Clean off. <laughs> this is fantastic. Okay. Now what you do is you get the tip and you rip the tip clean off like so. But you keep this. You do not throw this away. Okay? You'll need this later. <laughs> now you open up the toilet tissue. You'll see there is a hole in the middle of the toilet tissue. You put your finger inside the hole and you place the finger clean up your rectum and you clean all the cuck out of your ass. Then what you do is you grab the corner and you lift the corners up to the tip of your finger like so. Once you have done this, you grasp the toilet tissue at the base and you wipe all the cuck clean off your finger like so. Now, Remember that tip? What you do is you get the tip and you clean all the cut from under your fingernail. <laughs> and that is how you clean your ass in the South African jungle. <laughs> yeah. There you go. And then you get apprentices and uh, you, know, you play practical jokes on apprentices and you say, hey, make you go out, get a left-handed screwdriver. Make it go get some striped paint, all these silly jokes. Well, this was given, this speech was given to all the cadets in the army on their very first day of training, and they were told by a senior sergeant general in the army on how to survive in the jungle. I don't know how many of them took this to heart and actually done this in the jungle, but it'll be fun to find out. All right. Well, that's it, guys. I've told you a joke. I've told you another one. And now I believe it is time for our next segment. Thank you, Dan. Joke off. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage our guest comedian today, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Greaves. Thank you very much. Excellent. How are you doing? Let's do that. Bang. Because our, our hands are full, what else can we do? Why not? 
cool. Uh, take a step over, and uh, I think we're, we're looking pretty good. Uh, thanks for joining us today. No, pleasure. Uh, you got a couple of jokes prepared for us? Yeah, one or two. Cool. Do you want to, do you want to start, kick things off? Yeah, look, I did that. I thought I'd start off with the joke about paper. Paper? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've changed my mind, though. It's, it's, it's terrible. Terrible? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That was a nice one. That was a creeper. It crept in and then bang, they got it. That was nice. That yeah, was good, yeah. I was oh, happy okay. with that. Excellent. Good work, good work. The, gr the groans were justified. The groans were justified. The groans were justified, yeah. Cool. And not as good as the first one. No. <laughs> no. That's all right. That's all right. These things happen. That's good. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about my wife. My wife, uh, Olga, she's Greek. And in Greek, when you speak Greek and you say yes, you say ne. Which is the opposite. It's you know that stupid yeah. game you play as a kid. You know, yes is no, no means yes, no. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, that's what they do. Yeah. You know? And now she speaks quite loud. She's very very loud. Now she was in the lounge room. I was at the other side of the house. She's talking to her mum on the phone, and she's talking to the mum. She's like, ah, oh, yeah, ne, 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 ne. She doesn't say yes once. She's going to say it two or three times, right? And in the conversation, she said it quite a lot. So here she is, at the top of her voice, ne, 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 ne. Ne, 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 ne. She finally hangs up the phone and she's finished the conversation. I walk from, she walks from the other side of the house into the kitchen. I said, Olga, what the hell were you doing in there? I seriously thought for a moment there, there was a motorbike tearing through the lounge room. <laughs> it's a creeper. It's a it creeper. is a creeper. Yeah, that is a creeper. Yeah, okay, they're getting it. They're getting it. This is good. This yeah. is good. All right. And let's, let's take it home with a couple more jokes. Got another one for us? Yeah, okay. Uh, look, um, there was a lady behind the counter at Kmart. And uh, this bloke walked up to her, put his purchases on the counter. She's run them through and he's bought seven pairs of boxer shorts. She goes, whoa, hang on a minute. Why do you need seven pairs of boxer shorts? He goes, it's easy. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. She goes, you are a very clean gentleman. He goes, thank you very much. Off he goes. A Couple of hours later, another bloke comes in, puts his purchases on the counter. She runs them through, nine pairs of boxer shorts. She goes, nine pairs of boxer shorts. Why do you need nine pairs of boxer shorts? He goes, well, it's easy. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And an extra pair for Friday and Saturday night in case I meet a nice young lady. She goes, well, that's pretty thoughtful. That's fantastic. You have a good day. A couple of hours later, another bloke comes along, puts his purchases on the counter. She runs them through. 12 pairs of boxer shorts. She goes, why do you need 12 pairs of boxer shorts? You must be so clean. He goes, yeah, January, February, March. <laughs> That's great. That's good. That's good. All righty. I think, uh, well, can I top that? I don't think so. I think, no? maybe, I think maybe we might just leave it there. All right, not a problem. So uh, how about a round of applause for our guest comedian, Dave Bruce. And, uh, and while you're up here, Dave, do you want to... Dave runs a, a, a local Melbourne comedy room. Yes. Uh, how about uh, you tell us a bit about it while you're here? Yeah, so we've uh, got a, a comedy room running out of the Humdinger restaurant in Frankston. Uh, we run every Thursday night. It's free entry. And we've been getting uh, at least six comics a night. And the room has been going off. So find us on Facebook. You can Google Humdinger in Frankston. You can find it on their webpage. Definitely worth ringing up and booking if you want to come down. We have a great night. We have great fun. And please, we'd love to see you there. That's great. Well, that's what this show's all about. It's all about comedy. It's all about uh, promoting rooms and lo local Melbourne comedians. So get in amongst it. Get out there and uh, support local Melbourne comedy. Thank you very much. All right. That's it for, for Dave. Just for now, we're going to uh, do a little segment called uh, Knock Knock. Uh, sorry, don't knock it, which is our knock knock jokes. And then Dave's going to come back and uh, finish off with a bit of stand up. So for now, round of applause for Dave Blues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tell us another one a show with tall tales, jokes, and antidotes. Welcome to Bar Jokes. Uh, joining me today at the bar, of course, is our uh, 
Our special guest comedian, please uh, round of applause for Terry North. Cheers. <laughs> when they said they had coke here, I got totally on the wrong end of the stick, I'll tell you this. <laughs> Do you want to kick one off for yeah. us, Terry? I met a bloke at the bar the other day, I'd been to the doctors. Uh, apparently the doctor said to him, what's up with you? He said, it's not me, it's my brother. He said, what's up with me? He said, he thinks he's an orange. He said, well, you better bring him down and see me. He said, I've got him in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess, uh, you know, if on, this joke, uh, on this joke show, of course, we, we tell a joke and we tell another one, so it's my turn. Uh, so uh, there's a, uh, a nun, a priest, a Englishman, an Irishman, all rock up to the pub all at the same time and the bartender looks at him and goes, what is this, some sort of joke? <laughs> we'll, we start off slow and we build them up, guys. We we'll build them up. We'll get there. We'll get there. <clears throat> yeah, my mate, he has been to the pub lately. He got a job over in the UK. He was, he was driving a, 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 a physics professor around doing lectures all around the universities in the UK. And uh, he used to go and watch him every night and uh, he watched this guy do this thing for about an hour. And one day he says to me, he said, uh, if you don't ask me asking, uh, Professor, how much do you get paid for doing these lectures? He said, I get £10,000 a night, David. He said, really, £10,000? And all you do is that same hour every night. It's word for word. He said, I reckon I could do that. And the professor said, well, I'll tell you what then. On Friday night, we're doing Birmingham University. He said, if you can get up and pull this off, he said, I will give you the £10,000. And David's like, done. Well, he's real keen. So he watches him every night, takes notes. They get to Birmingham University. David gets up, gets a standing ovation. He's, he's pulled it off and he's thinking, oh, 10 grand. And then the dean of the university stands up and says, uh, being this is the professor's last one of the tour, he's agreed to take questions from the floor. <laughs> and David's like, oh, you don't. Yeah. And so you know, this guy gets up and asks him all these questions about the speed of light and quantum this and quantum that. David just sort of chin, strokes his chin a little bit and he goes, do you know what? That question is so basic, I'm going to get my chauffeur to answer that. <laughs> oh, come on, pick up the phone, please. Hello, call before you dig. Trent speaking. Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm going to dig a little veggie patch in the backyard, and uh, someone telling me I have to call you before I dig. Correct. What's the address there, please? And your name? Yes, yes. So my name is uh, Giuseppe Rizzo, and uh, this is number 12, uh, Gip Italia Avenue in Brunswick. And I want to dig uh, right across to the back of the fence. Uh -huh. Look, I'm just checking there. Uh, yes, sir, should be fine as long as there's no easement. I'm sorry, what do you say? Easement? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not easy, mate. It's a hard work to make a veggie patch, you know? Yeah, I'm sure it is. And Look, you have to just... put the, the manure, you have to dig the soil, you know, fertilise. It's a hard work, it's not easy. Look, Giuseppe, just how, how deep are you digging there? Hey, we dig, I don't know, one foot, foot and a half. We see what the soil is like anyway. You know what I mean, you know what it's like. No, I don't actually. Look, just don't dig any deeper than two feet because otherwise you might damage the internet. What are you talking about to damage the net? We have to put the fruit to grow on the trees and then we put the net. And if I damage the net, what's it going to do with you anyway? Just be careful there, Giuseppe. Thank you. Bye. It's a good bye. Uh, very nice. Have a good day. Same to you. Uh, these young kids, what do they know about hard work anyway? Huh? Sit in the bloody computer all day in the little air conditioned office. I got no idea. Oh, what's happening here? Dad, what have you done? The internet stopped working. <gasps> ah, cuts of the internet. Hello? Yes, hello. This is the internet company. Is there a Giuseppe there, please? Uh, I'm sorry, I think you got the wrong number. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's time for our Don't Knock It, Knock Knock Jokes. Yeah. 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 Knock Knock. Who's there? Needle. And you're going to say. Needle who? Uh, I think your yodeling needs a little work. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. I was got, uh, we have one from the audience. Uh, I think I know what's coming here. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage none other than my lovely wife, Olga. Yeah. 
Yeah. All righty, here we go. Get ready for this one. Who's get ready? Knock, knock. Who's there? Olga. Olga who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Olga. Olga who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Olga. Olga who? I'll go away. Can I open the door? <laughs> Thank you, Olga. Big round of applause for our special guest. Yay! Special guest, Knock Knocker. That's awesome. Uh, this is a little Italian one here, so I'm going to say Knock Knock, and this time you are going to do an Italian response, which is uh, Ma who is? Knock Knock. Ma who is? Police. Police. Ma police open the door, it's a bloody cold out the side. <laughs> All right. Tell us another one, a show with tall tales, jokes and antidotes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our guest comedian, none other than Dave Greaves. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming out tonight. Great to see all you lovely people here. Um, I've been doing stand-up comedy for a few years now. I love it. I absolutely adore stand-up comedy. Doesn't quite pay the bills just yet. <laughs> So I've still got a day job, and I happen to work as a truck driver. Hardly a surprise. And you know what, it's not a fun job. So much of it seems to be just simply <laughs> staring out of a windscreen. White line, white line, white line. <laughs> That's before I start the truck. My, uh, my truck broke down recently. <laughs> Handed it to the mechanic, he came back to me and he's gone, I'm, I'm really sorry Dave, um, I, think, I think it's your gearbox. I think it's having an identity crisis. <laughs> Went, really? And he goes, yeah, 18 gears and all of them are identifying as neutral. <laughs> <laughs> if you find yourself pulled over by the police for a random breath test, and you've got your mouth wrapped firmly around that tube and you're blowing for all you're worth, whatever you do, never look up at the officer and wink. <laughs> <laughs> they do not appreciate it. The guys in the car with me thought it was hilarious <laughs> when I was detained. I, uh, I was headed on the freeway and from out of nowhere, this bloke just cuts me off. Gave me a bit of a fright, so I pulled on the horns, hit the brakes. Only seemed to upset this bloke. He's reached out of his window and he's giving me the finger. Wasn't enough, so he's doubled it. Next thing I know, he's pulled into the next lane and started to slow down to have a word with me. <laughs> He's pulled along beside me, his window's gone down, he's leant across the car, he's looked up at me and he's screamed, WANKER! Took off. Now for the record, I did not chase him, I did not pursue him, I did not stalk him, but uh, this is Melbourne. And our traffic sucks. <laughs> All he could see in his rear view mirror for the next half an hour was the most frightening image on Melbourne roads. Me blowing him kisses. Eventually we came to my turn off and I couldn't help myself because I knew I'd be pulling right up alongside of him. I've wound down my window and I've leant out of the truck. Our eyes met and I went. The look on his face was almost as good as the look on his face when he ran up the ass of the car in front of him. <laughs> Uh, I, ha I have been driving for a truck for a long, long time. I'm, I'm trying to get out of it. I thought it would be a good idea to have a crack at an online business. So I thought I'd try and sell authorised upskirting photos. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite work out, unfortunately. Um, no one was interested in hairy guy in kilts. 
hurt my back taking those selfies. <laughs> I ended up seeing a physiotherapist. Um, he, uh, I think he's a bit of a smart ass. So I was lying on his table. He was working on my lower back. Next thing I know, he leans over my shoulder and he whispers into my ear. Hey, Dave, are you seeing anyone? I said, actually, mate, I'm married. He goes, ha ha, so you're having sex then? I said, dude, I'm married. No. <laughs> he goes, that's a shame because sex is really good for your back. I said, come again? He goes, exactly. <laughs> he said, sex is really good for your back. It'll straighten the spine, strengthen the muscles, and the endorphins that are released will dull the pain. I said, that's actually pretty cool, but I've got no chance of convincing the wife of this. He goes, don't worry, I've got you covered. I'll write you a prescription for her. And he did, he wrote me a prescription for sex. It was great in the instructions, it said to be taken twice daily. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't work. No, she just handed me 200 bucks and told me to find the generic brand. <laughs> been, um, been married for 20 years now. Uh, I've got a wonderful relationship with my wife. Um, our relationship is so good that we are still having sex nearly every night of the week. <laughs> nearly on Mondays, nearly on Tuesdays, <laughs> nearly on Wednesdays. We'd, um, we'd been shopping and uh, I, uh, we were, as I was unpacking the shopping, I pulled out a bottle of nail polish that she'd bought for herself. And I noticed that the company had named the colour G-Spot. I looked at my wife and I said, did you colour match this? <laughs> Didn't want to know the answer, I just handed it back to her, let her put it away. One thing that didn't surprise me though, not three days later, she couldn't find it either. <laughs> we got two wonderful kids. When they, were, when they were a lot younger, I thought it would be a good idea to take them in to build a bear. Get them to build their own teddy bears. A bit of a, bit of a surprise for them. And the youngest, she's only about three years old, she goes, Daddy, I, I can't pick a costume. There's too many to pick from. And I had a look at it and there's a wall of different costumes. And I said, you've been such a good little girl. You can pick three different costumes to dress the bear up however you feel like. And she goes, oh, thanks, Daddy. And I said, well, what do you want? She goes, I want a nurse. I said, well, we'll get you a nurse. She goes, I want a firefighter. Well, we'll get you a firefighter. She goes, I want a police officer. And well, we'll get you a police officer. It wasn't until I was halfway home that I realised that my daughter's teddy bear now works as a stripper. <laughs> When, um, when my eldest was only about four years old, I uh, picked her up to take her to bed one night. And as we walked past the TV, <clears throat> an old car commercial came on that uses the tagline, bugger. She looks at me and goes, Daddy, that's a rude word. And I said, that is a rude word. We don't use rude words, do we? She goes, no, Daddy. Mummy does. <laughs> I did realise at that point that this would be a fantastic opportunity to trick my four-year-old into saying the word bugger. So I tuck her into bed and I kiss her on the forehead. And I say, now love, remember, what's that rude word you're not allowed to say? She looks up at me and she smiles and said, F <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody. So uh, hope you guys had a great night tonight. For those yeah. of you watching, hope you guys can join us on our next episode. Come down to the Dan Nong Club and join us. And uh, give yourselves a round of applause. Thanks for our live audience. Okay. And uh, as I mentioned last time, we are raising funds for Hard Kids. So uh, please donate to Hard Kids and, uh, and uh, have a great night. And uh, be good and good things happen. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Round of applause for all those people who made it possible tonight. Is this turned off? Hey, Dan. Hey, there we go. Have a, have a round of applause for, our, for Dan, our AV guy. Hey. <laughs>
hope we've got everything working pretty well today. This is how the, the show will be from now on. We think we've not ironed out all the kinks. Uh, round of applause for yourselves, thank you guys. And uh, all those behind the scenes that have made it happen. So uh, the marketing, the advertising, the material, Claudia, uh, Jerry, Charlie helped me out today as well. Family, Olga, thank you guys for all helping out and making this show possible. Really appreciate it. And thank you guys for showing up. So, thanks.